get into it. I'm so excited that we're doing this. Um, I mentioned this. I don't know if everyone was on. So this is our first uh, webinar in our seller series. So we conduct, we host, create, conduct webinars all the time, all over town, but we haven't been hosting them ourselves. We're doing them with other organizations outside in the community. So we thought, why don't we host some? We love doing it. We love sharing information and helping people. Why are we here today? It's such a great question. I was asking myself that earlier. What am I doing here on this planet? Why are we here? So today for the webinar, what are we doing here? Um, let me go up into the corner and this a little bit. Okay. This is why we're here. And I'm just going to cut right to it. The condition of your home affects your bank account. And I feel like all of us get really excited when we have bigger bank accounts. How do we get from here to here? The condition of your home really drives the online experience for the buyer. So imagine if you are looking at homes online or you have in the past, you're on your iPad, you're on the couch, maybe you have people around you in that room and you're showing people the iPad or the laptop or your phone, whatever you're using. So that online experience is really critical. We want to have more eyes on your listing because of the condition, which lead to more feet in the door, more motivated buyers who are writing better, stronger offers. And this is, increases your uh, power as a seller. So we love this. And we talk about this a lot when we meet with sellers. For those of you who don't know who I am, I'm, I'm Wendy Slaughter. I'm one of the co-founders. I said that earlier. Um, I've been in the business for 18 years, which is kind of strange to say. And I will tell you that I don't think that it really matters how long you've been in the business. I think other things matter um, or I think they're more important and we can talk about that too. I've lived in Howard County for over 20 years. Um, I went to Hopkins for grad school. I have a degree in business with a concentration in marketing. And a lot of you on this um, webinar already know me through Facebook and you know that these are the things I like to do. Um, another thing I like to do is um, spend time with Rocky Brown who I'm going to introduce, um, or I'm going to let him introduce himself. But I do want to say that I have hired Rocky to um, do renovation work in my house. And he also helped me. I had an, uh, an investment property in Elkridge that I owned for 17 years, and he completely renovated that so I could sell it. So while we're not here to sell you on me or Rocky, I just feel like I need to say that before uh, I hand things over to him. I think he's a great human being. Um, Rocky, do you want to introduce yourself? Thank you, Wendy. Uh, sure. Pleasure to be here today. Like Wendy said, I'm the owner of Rocky's Renovation. I'm actually a team member on the Wendy Slaughter team. Uh, I've been in real estate pretty much all my life. My mom is a realtor here in Howard County for many, many years, just awarded the uh, Lifetime Achievement Award from the Howard County Association of Realtors just about a month ago. But my mom was my mentor. And uh, one day I met Wendy and I said, what can you do for me? And she told me everything that she could do. And I said, I'm coming over to your team. And I've never looked back. Uh, Baltimore Magazine, top agent. That was a nice little uh, vignette about my life and selling real estate. But it also featured the fact that I love pickleball. So pickleball is a big passion of mine. We could talk about that offline. Um, but today... We're going to talk about renovations and refreshing and how we can help put more money in your pocket as a seller here in 2024. Or later. Or later. Or later. So our right. agenda for today, we're going to quickly go through a little bit about our team. Then we want to focus on you. We want to talk about the selling process, updates and renovations. We have a, a great um, collection that we curated over the past like two weeks of some before and afters that I, we love. Um, <clears throat> you're gonna hear us talking about the business and using words like love because we love the work we do. I love a good renovation, um, whether you're selling your home or not. It doesn't, yeah, it's just, it's so fun. And then we'll um, touch briefly on the active and under contract phases. So a little bit about the team. This is not all of us in this picture, but we did just win Best of Howard County for the first time. <clears throat> We've been nominated a few times. Um, we're very grateful for that because it's an award from the community and it means a lot to us. This is 
a collection of pictures of beautiful human beings that I get to work with. These are um, this, these are all the agents from the team. Tess is on the call. She's our team manager. She runs the business. Um, Maria can't be with us today. She's traveling. She's our director of client services. She's also just an awesome person. And um, oftentimes when our clients write reviews, they mention Tess and Maria in their reviews, which we really appreciate. Our stats, we're in the, oh, we're in the top 1% for the state. And when I say that, what that means is it, it's referring to our sales volume. How much, what does our sales volume look like? So we do qualify. We're actually in the top 0.2%, but that just sounds weird to say. Um, we're number seven in Howard County. I Actually, I think these stats, we're going to be updating these soon, but this is from 2022. So I think there might be some minor adjustments for 2023, but at the time, we were number seven out of about 3,700 agents. And then number 18 in Central Maryland out of about 14,000 agents. This is what we care about the most, this 91%. 91% of our business comes from referrals. And that is very strange for a real estate team. Um, it speaks to our clients' experience. It speaks to our staff, it speaks to our tech, it speaks to our marketing, it speaks to the painters we bring in. I mean, the electricians, um, the attorneys, wh whatever we need, it speaks to all of that. And that's what I love the most. Our sellers love this. We've been selling homes faster for the past really 15 years. We do have 2023 numbers. Tess, do you remember what those are for Howard County? Is it five? Yeah, ours is five, and I think Howard County went up to 19. Well, is it 19? I think so. Okay. We'll solidify those later, but we did beat it again. So what does that mean? Like, if you're a seller, like, why do you care about that? Um, that is speaking to how long it takes you to go under contract. So we have beat the average days on market for Howard County for 15 years, and we've done the same for Central Maryland. So not just in Howard County. About 50% of the work we do is in Howard County. We're also known for giving back in the community. And um, there's a quote, I'm, I'm going to butcher it, but it's basically, there's a famous chef, Massimo, if anybody knows, you can throw the name out there. But he says, it, like, you have to give back some of the lucky life that you have. And everyone on our team believes that. So... We're, we're always doing that too. And it makes us feel good. Let's shift the focus. Let's talk about you. Let's talk about sellers. What does it mean to be a seller? Some of us have not been sellers ourselves for a long, long time. I did just sell that house in Elkridge, but prior to that, it was years, probably 20 years, long time. So we like to break things down into three phases for sellers. Phase one is the phase that we're going to be focused on for the rest of the webinar. Phase one, we're gonna to touch on two and three a little bit, just sprinkle it in. But phase one, updating, refreshing, getting your house ready for the market, that's what we're gonna focus on. And then breaking that down a little bit, breaking that one phase down, there are four subcategories inside getting your house ready. So for now, we're going to, we're going to launch by talking about repairs and deferred maintenance, but then we're going to, and Rocky's going to talk about that. And then we're going to start talking about the updates. And to me, that's the fun part. Repairs and deferred maintenance is boring. It's all the things that we know we have to do that we haven't done. I think Tess is laughing at me. It just is. So these are the first two things that we're going to talk about, deferred maintenance and repairs. Rocky, do you want to talk a little bit about those? Sure. So deferred maintenance is those things that uh, we have neglected, right? So our torn window screens, uh, maybe the siding has had some wear and tear on it. We haven't painted it in the appropriate amount of time. And now we need to replace some uh, siding and, uh, you know, checking the downspouts. So they directed away from the house, not leaking towards the foundation, oiling hinges, and then when you get to the inside of your home, are you changing your filters on your HVAC on a regular basis? You might have some cabinets that are a little out of skew. 
and you just deal with it. You're like, oh, that's just the cabinet's leaning to the left. But when you're set about to sell your home, you want to make sure that can be adjusted uh, so that it looks like it's supposed to and put your home in the best uh, viewing light possible. Does that make sense? Yeah, I mean, I think about my punch list and I think most people I know have just a list of things. They're not critical and we're just not doing them. And when we meet with sellers and we walk around the house, this is usually a time when they're asking us questions. Like, do I need to do X, Y, Z? Um, it's amazing how fast you can get those done when you're selling your house. And I've had sellers say, I don't know why I didn't do that. Like it took us a week to get 20 little, you know, things tightened and fixed or whatever, but we all do that. There's a question from Phil. If you want to go back to that slide. Sure. What is a common misconception among sellers regarding an aspect of the house that we might think is important to enhance, but really does not bring the bang for the buck? Hmm. That's a good question. That is, that is a good question. Um, so for example, I just had a listing recently over in Hobbit's Glen and this house was built in the seventies and it was a certain, uh, mode of construction and they don't have gutters on certain parts of the, the house, but the roof line extends way past the facade of the house. So it's not an issue of water getting near your foundation because of the way the roof line was built. But buyers are like, oh, we think we need gutters there, right? But you don't, and you don't need to spend the money on that. And what we do is we evaluate every aspect of your home. Uh, as we walk up to your home to meet you for your listing appointment, we're taking pictures, we're looking before we even ring the doorbell to meet you. We're kind of getting an idea of, you know, how's your home maintained? And uh, it becomes a point of discussion once we get inside. Does that make sense? I yep, think so. Cool. Thanks. Um, so I'm remembering I had sellers in River Hill and they had a finished basement, but no bedroom down there. And they did have a walkout basement. So they could put a window in to the foundation and build a teeny tiny closet on the side. And then they would have pushed themselves into that next category. And this doesn't really fall into repairs or deferred maintenance. This is more about like looking at everything that they have going on and how to maximize value. So they did that. I remember they brought a contractor out who put a window in um, a room that was already finished. It was just didn't have a window and it didn't have a closet. And that put them a hundred thousand dollars higher. Um, it, it just put them into a different uh, pricing category. So there are times um we're looking at all of it. Phil, I'm thinking about your question. Like each, each scenario is really different because there's a list of things that you could do, but you might not need to do. And we have to come in and see what needs to be done in order to kind of qualify that and rank it. Um, so people reach out to us definitely when they're getting ready to sell they're like we don't we need someone to help us with this we need carpet we need new carpet in the basement we need the foyer needs to be painted it's a two-story foyer we can't do it ourselves you know whatever it is um rocky obviously he owns a renovation company and he has access to all of these vendors um and he can help we also can just refer you to a plumber we can refer you to you know an electrician and because we've been in business for so long, we have a great list of um, contractors. Rocky, do you want to talk more about that? Sure. So uh, as Wendy said, we do have a great list of contractors. It's on our website at the Wendy Slaughter Team website. Uh, and you can look under, what's the what's the heading there? I forget. But uh, A service directory. So service it's, directory, yes. Yeah. Uh, but all these people that you see in this in this infographic, I have underneath my umbrella of Rocky's renovations. So I have uh, master plumbers, master electricians, uh, blinds, installation uh, personnel, multiple, multiple general contractors that work underneath me. So what I do is I offer a full service package. So anything anybody needs, I have. You don't have to piecemeal it. You call me. I get you what you need, who you need, when you need it. 
Um, I oversee those projects and it could be small. So for example, we have painters down the street getting a listing ready for one of our team members. Then the team member called and said, oh, we need to get the house cleaned. I said, no problem. Called the cleaning crew. They'll be there after we're done painting. So oftentimes things are fluid and you might forget that you might need a different service. What all you have to do is call me and that's a value added uh, piece that we have under Rockies Renovations Umbrella that we can provide. So you don't have to do all the legwork and go to the website and call the plumber and call the electrician. I do all that for you. So like I said before, I've worked with Rocky personally um, on an investment property and also in my own home. We also have another option on the team and we'll probably do a separate webinar just about this. Um, so there's another agent on the team who owns a renovation company and she has a pay at settlement option. So some of our sellers, especially our um, the older our older adult community who is moving into specialized communities, they have so much equity in their house, but they don't really want to use cash for renovations up front, especially if they're doing a lot. Um, so we do have another option to pay at settlement if that's something. And and I say we, I want to be clear, these are separate businesses from our real estate team. So, you know, I would love Rocky and I actually are business partners. We're we're business partners in the team. We own commercial space together. So we are business partners in other places in our lives. But Rocky's renovations is completely separate. Um from and the same with the other renovation company. I just feel like I want to point that out. So let's talk about updating the home. So at the beginning, when we kicked off, this is what we talked about, right? The condition of your home is the foundation of your selling experience. And we want to just connect it right to your bank account. It really does matter. So Tess had this great idea. Thank you, Tess. Um, to show some before and afters and think of, try to think of things, try to think about the houses like you're walking in and you're the buyer. Um, now, now we are showing befores where they weren't ready to list. So to be fair, they really are way before, 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 not like right before. So this is a good example of a before and before Rocky, I'm going to have you take over on this, but I do want to point something out. Everyone lives in their house the way they want to live in their house. Please understand that we don't care. Like you know, sometimes I'll be talking to a seller on the phone and they're like, oh my, okay, well, wait, let me clean up. Let me make sure I need a few days to clean up. You don't need to clean up. We don't care about you cleaning up. I mean, if you want to, you can, we're not telling you not to, but you don't have to. We all live in a certain way in our homes and we call that living condition. And when you're getting ready to sell your house, we want to transform the space to showing condition. So Rocky, do you want to talk about what they did here? Sure. So if you uh, remember what the before picture looked like, uh, there was window treatments on the wall. I believe they were lace and those definitely needed to be removed. Uh, the owners of this home saved money by keeping their existing cabinetry and appliances. They spent money on changing out the flooring, changing out the countertops, and ultimately putting fresh paint on the walls and the ceiling. So this is an example of a modified update. We're not ripping, we're, we're not gonna spend your money unless we think there's going to be a return. We're not gonna recommend that you spend your money. Rocky, talk to me, We, you and I talked about this before. If someone was actually working with you after they bought the house and they wanted to renovate this kitchen, wouldn't they consider taking out this bulkhead? So they they would, it's a consideration, yes. And if there's nothing impeding uh, that space, what I mean by that, Wendy, there could be plumbing in there, there could be HVAC, nine times see. out of 10, it's nothing in there. It's just the builders save money by giving you a shorter cabinet and right. to put frame and drywall than it is to give you taller 42 inch cabinets. So yes, if you need more cabinet space, we could definitely take the bulkhead out and increase the height of your cabinets, maybe put some recessed lighting in there. Um, and those cabinets look like they're in pretty good shape. So yeah. we often do kitchen renovations where if you like the layout of your kitchen, um, we can have your cabinets painted, right? Yeah. 
And uh, that looks really nice. We recently took down uppers in a house, upper cabinet, and made custom walnut shelving. And the people love it. And it just kind of opens up the space. It yeah. reduces your storage, but they had enough storage everywhere else in their kitchen, kitchen that existed that it just made sense. So painted the cabinets, um, new countertops. And so, yeah, the world yeah. is your oyster once you own the house. Whatever you want to do, we can make it happen. When you're selling, we're looking for shortcuts. And, you know, that word, no one likes to use that word, right? Because it sounds like you're not really doing everything that you could be doing. But maybe, that's maybe, maybe the path of the path of least resistance, right? And yes. the path the path of least expense. Yes. This is a you know a value added proposition. You want to sell your home. You want to get the most money for your home. Right. So what are the what are the things that you need to do? And I think I saw a question before. You know what's most important? And we had a discussion about this, I believe, yesterday. But kitchens and bathrooms sell houses, right? Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Yeah, people are going to ask about the age of your roof. They're going to ask about the age of your HVAC system. But at the end of the day, if they walk in your house and your kitchen looks like Gordon Ramsay can cook in there, right? And your bathroom is like a mini spa, you know, they'll be like, all right, we can kind of overlook the fact that the roof is 24 right. years old, as long as it's not leaking. Right. Good. So. so there was a question about that specifically, if you had thoughts on whether renovating the kitchen versus the bathroom like if you're going to pick one or the other which one would give you the bigger bang for your buck the kitchen so uh, the kitchen is a central space in the home that's where you spend a lot of your time uh, if you're eating three meals a day it's a gathering space oftentimes people use their kitchen islands as an office or a place to set their computer it's just where people gather right um, not everybody gathers in the bathroom uh, at least i hope not but uh you, you don't know, know what people uh, are doing. Right. You know, but, people uh, might be all getting together in the bath. I mean, I have dogs, so there's always a lot of activity in the bath. But an upgraded bathroom is a nice to have. It's not always a need to have. There's things that we can do to bathrooms, which you'll see in a couple of slides here in just a minute, that can add a nice pop of uh, zhuzh or pizzazz to your existing bathroom and uh, not spend a lot of money. So yeah. we answered your question. And we can talk more about that with these next slides, too. So we talk a lot about the inside of homes. The outside matters too. And I feel like most people understand that, that the outside also matters. Um, this was definitely during the winter, you can see with the trees here. If this had been a different season, we would have recommended that they also just put some potted things out in the yard. But you can see all they did was trim some things back, clean this out, and, and bring the rocks forward. This is what Rocky was just talking about when it comes to bathrooms. So Rocky, do you wanna talk about these two? Sure, so here we have uh, an existing bathroom, builder grade, four inch white tiles, uh, the vanity as you can see, and the big ballet mirror, right? You're in the dance studio, and then here's the transformation. So you're like, whoa, that looks much different. Well, the vanity is higher. It's comfortable height for brushing your teeth more in the uh, this this uh, decade that we're in as far as design and style. Uh, took the big mirror off the wall, added two smaller mirrors, new lighting above those mirrors that were added, new hardware, meaning uh, the faucets are new and fresh paint, right? Now you're like, huh, that looks great. Yeah. But you will also notice if you look hard enough that the shower is the same and the bathtub is the same but for a few thousand dollars right that vanity is probably about 26 to 3200 dollars the mirrors just say they're 150 each and the light fixtures 150 each i mean for under five thousand dollars you've just brightened up and refreshed your space without having us to come in and tear out all the tile, tear out the tub, rebuild the shower, custom glass doors. So 5,000 as opposed to 36,000, uh, I think that makes sense if you're selling your home. Yeah, I love this. This is, I love when we can do this. So this reminds me, um, Julie helped me on, there was a seller on Martin Road and they were actually out of the country. So we were doing all of this over the phone and FaceTime and everything. They had a cabinet that was like the pickled oak. Do you know what's like a light pink? Yeah. So, but the lines on the cabinet looked good and the cabinet was still, the quality was there. 
So she painted it dark blue and I forget the name of it. It's like navel something. Um, she might be on this call and I might have her talk about that at the end. Um, but I mean, she saved them so much money just by painting the cabinet. Go ahead. What were you going to say, Rocky? Well, so that's a good point. So if your cabinets are in good shape, yes, cabinets can be painted. And yeah. if you want to add a little height to it, we actually can increase the height of your cabinetry um, by adding uh, two by fours on the top, right? And decorative trim, and then putting a new vanity top on top. Uh, you have to weigh out the labor and materials. Yeah versus just buying a brand new vanity. So uh, there could be a couple of hundred dollars in savings, um, but it can be done. So we do it all the time. People are like, hey, I love my cabinets. Can you just paint them? Increase the height of the Increase counter. Increase the height. Our back hurts. And, and we do that too. That's a good point. Um, I just feel like vanities, the cost of vanities, especially from the big box stores have come down so much that yeah. it feels affordable to go just get a new vanity. Um, Rocky, this was one of your clients, right? That is. So that's where we cut our teeth on uh, Rocky's renovation. That was the inaugural renovation that we undertook. So this house is over in Owen Brown. It's built in the 70s. And those cabinets are actually, they were nailed to the walls. So maybe they didn't use screws in the 70s. Um, obviously, the family that lived there was like, hey, it's good enough. On the right-hand side, that bank of cabinets was a little more modern, um, but you wonder where the refrigerator is. It's over in the mudroom. So a little uh, disorganized, not a great flow, and then that's what we ultimately turned it into. So redid the hardwood floors, put in white shaker cabinetry, nice granite countertops, uh, Samsung stainless black appliances, matte black sink and fixtures. Uh, we even did a black route on the gray uh, subway tile, and we put some shiplap back in the mudroom to make it a true mudroom, new light fixtures, recessed lighting, and it's a totally different space. So first, it's beautiful. And this was for a seller, right? Yes. Okay. And then we talked about this yesterday or the day before. You, for this client, because they were a seller and- that's our focus for today. You are able to make the selections and present them. Do you want to talk about that too? Sure. So this particular seller, um, they're like, hey, we want to sell our house. And I said, that's great. And they said, we don't have the vision. And I told them, I said, you could sell your house as is. And this is what you could expect in a sales price based on the current marketplace. I believe it was 360,000 as is, if you can believe that with those cabinets that you saw beforehand, that they could have got $360,000 for that house in the current condition. So I told them, I said, if we upgrade your kitchen, redo your flooring, redo your primary bathroom up on the upper level, put new carpet in, new lighting, this is what you could expect to sell your home for with all of these upgrades. And they looked at the numbers and they said, hey, that makes sense. Now their total renovation cost was $72,000. Um, but they sold their house uh, for a, a lot more. I don't have the exact numbers in front of me, but they definitely uh, paid for their renovations and doubled their money um, on, on the backside. So to the selections, yes, I told them move out and just let me have it. And they said, that's fine. And so they moved out. I brought the team in, I did the design, we took down walls, we have a custom uh, hardwood floor color there that we created for this particular property. And it's a matte finish, it's not a shiny bowling alley finish. Those are oak floors that you see in most houses that used to be orangish. Um, so we can do magic with that. And at the end of the day, I sent them some pictures. I said, here's what your home looked like before and here's what it looks like now. And they're like, wow, it's beautiful. And uh, we sold it multiple offers and they moved off to Cambridge, Maryland and couldn't be happier. That's with awesome. I love, I love the whole story. So I also want to say at this point too, let's say you are a seller and you need to do renovations and you're not working with Rocky. That's fine. Um, we, um, we have designers who at no additional cost to you, um, it's included in the fees 
can they can come in and show you the palette and show you the um, design board and you know make all of these selections. And um, this is, I mean, Rocky, you did that in my house in Elkridge. You just kind of took care of it, including replacing all the hinges, which was amazing. Right, oh. right, that, that's a good point. Yes, we do replace. Yeah. I mean, we replace the hinges on all your door hardware. Yeah. Um, even even your floor vent registers or your ceiling yeah. vent registers. Like it, I don't miss different. I don't miss a thing. I'm very hyper focused on the details. So if we're gonna do it, we're gonna do it right. Yeah. And, um, so you know what? When you were talking about the floors and that orangey like old school oak, that you know a lot of us have in Columbia because you know they're just it's older hardwood. I wish I'd included and um, in Sebring Anne's before and after floors. Sure. Oh, they were Thank gorgeous. You. Matt, natural. You, I mean, you did such a great job with those. Thank you. Um, thank you. Thank you for helping my client. She moved to North Carolina and she is very happy. Um, and she was very happy with her bank account. So the, Lauren is actually on the call and Lauren was generous enough to let us um, take a peek at one of her clients before and afters. I wanted to show everyone on the call what paint and carpet can do. And this, honestly, again, I've been doing this for a long time. This is one of my favorite before and afters. Um, so this is the before and you can tell, you know, they're still packing. They're, they're not ready for showings or anything yet. But just the way the light is in this foyer, it's like a different house. And we actually are using a picture where the spindles aren't white yet. They they also painted um, the spindles. But let me show you another. So again, carpet and paint, I will tell you sometimes that's all anyone needs is just maybe a little bit of new carpet. Sometimes they just need new carpet in the basement and that's it. They don't need it all over the house. They don't need new hardwood because a lot of what we're talking about feels like big renovations. Um, the before and after on this is just so amazing. And when I see this kind of picture, I get so excited for my clients because I know they're going to make more money. Like buyers are going to walk in and just feel so good in the space. And again, consider that online experience, right? The online experience, we we see there are homes that are listed that have, you know, very personal paint colors in them in the MLS, um, but just, oh my God, it's such a huge difference. I love it. I love it so much. Um, let's talk a little bit. Rocky, before we go on, anything else you want to add about paint carpet? Uh, yes. I mean, we always tell people that paint is a dollar in the can when you purchase it, but it's worth $3 to you on the wall. So you yes. pretty much uh, triple your your investment on the purchase of paint. And there's, var there's varying levels of paint too. So if we're just selling your house and you don't care, we're gonna use a product from Sherwin-Williams called Super Paint, which is a quality paint. We're gonna paint your house one homogeneous color. We'll make your trim bright white. We'll paint all your interior doors and closet doors and just give it a brand new fresh look um if you're staying in your home and you're like oh we really hate our walls then we're going to come in and we're going to bring in benjamin moore aura which is 90 dollars a gallon and it's washable matte and we'll use the colors that you'd like but that paint's going to last you 10 years when we put it on the wall so people yeah, are like oh awesome. dollars a gallon but 10 years right that's a pretty it's a long time so the higher quality of the paint longer it lasts um, but there's various varying options for selling versus living it yeah, I didn't appreciate quality paint until I realized you could get many more years out of it. And, um, you know, I just did a lot in my house in 2022 because I thought I was going to be selling my house, decided not to do it. And I wish I'd used better paint because, I mean, it's only, it's not even two years later. Right. And it already looks like dry and <laughs> I just don't like it. Okay, let's talk about staging. I want to introduce our stagers and designers, basically. So I'm I'm pretty sure Julie's on this call. Can anyone, Taz, can you tell? Is she on the call? She's not. I think she's hiding. Oh, she's hiding. Okay. 
So Julie and I have known each other since we were like three or four years old. We were both living in Baltimore City in row houses and we went to kindergarten together in the city. And then later we both moved out of the city um, out to Carroll County. And then we ended up going to school again together for the rest of our lives. And um, we've been friends since then. And I love her so much. And that's not what this webinar is supposed to be about. Um, so let me tell you more about Julie. Um, she's a fantastic human being. And I say that about everyone I'm talking about on the webinar because they are. I want to work shoulder to shoulder with good human beings. That's what I want. And the older I get, the more important that is to me. So Julie is fantastic. She's talented. She's kind. She's funny. And she helps our sellers make more money. So that's what I care about for you if you're on the webinar as a seller. So Julie said she's on her way to meet a client. She's not hiding. Okay. <laughs> well, hopefully she can. Julie, I love you. Um, I also love Karen. Karen is actually an agent on our team. And she is also a stager. Um, Rocky, you worked with you worked with her for years before she was an agent with us, right? That is correct. So I, I for many years I said, Karen, why don't she goes, I have my real estate license. And I was like, Well, you need to come join our team. So when I used to go on listing appointments, I would actually bring Karen with me as well as a contractor, because I didn't have Rocky's renovations at that time. So if we went to your house to meet you for a listing appointment, I would walk in, I would say, hi, I'm Rocky. This is Karen. She's our stager. She's going to help out today. And this is Jim. He's our contractor. He's going to help out as well. So while I'm having a meeting with the prospective sellers, Karen is walking through the house, creating her staging ideas. Jim is walking through the house, testing toilets, looking under sinks, seeing if there's any leaks, checking to see if you need caulking, et cetera. And by the time we're all done, we present to the seller uh, their options, right? And Karen has already moved some furniture around and showed them a different look for their space. And it was just a value added proposition. Um, that's how we used to go on listing appointments uh, 10 years ago. And I finally convinced Karen to come over to the team and she helps us pick out paint colors and she stages homes. And in turn, I'm helping her paint a listing and get it cleaned. And she actually texted me last night at 10 o'clock showing me a leak in her ceiling. And I said, well, you might want to go upstairs and turn off all the water underneath the sink and the toilet. And she goes, oh, it's the toilet. I said, no problem. Just turn it off. And I'll go there after this call today, evaluate it. And we'll have our team go over and fix up Karen's ceiling and change out the valve. And it'll be like it never happened. So At her house? At her house. Yes, ma'am. Oh, Karen. Karen. I don't think she's on the call. I'm sorry you're dealing with that. Also, I'm in bed at 10 o'clock at night. So if anyone texts me at 10, <laughs> I'll see it the next day. So don't, if you have a leak, don't text me that late. I'm just not going to see it. I won't be helpful at all. Anyway, Karen and Julie are awesome. And um, they help make the selections. They do paint consults. There's, They do a million things. What we care about is that they help you make more money. That's what I care about. Um, and you're just going to have a better selling experience overall. So what I didn't say about Julie and Karen is that they, if they are staging your house, they will use what you have. So um, they will use your furniture. They will use your accessories. They'll make piles in each room for you to pack up and put away. If you don't have furniture in your house, which happens quite a bit with my clients. So a lot of my clients don't want to deal with showings. They, they just want to move out to their next house and then sell their house after they buy their next house. And um, some of them have second homes or they're relocating out of state for whatever reason, they have another place to live either already or they've already made that the purchase. Um, not everyone does that. So I'm not, I don't want to send the wrong impression that like everybody's just moving out of their houses. But if you had a vacant room or a couple of rooms that were vacant or your whole house was vacant, it's not a problem. We can provide virtual staging. So that means that we are um, working with a marketing company who will come in and take your photograph, all the photographs of the house. Here's another example. They had already moved out. And that same marketing company, we will tell them which rooms we want virtually staged and they provide virtual staging. So, what I love about this so much is that in the MLS, what we do is we show both pictures. We show the vacant picture, 
no furniture. And then we show the staged picture so that when buyers are online, having that online experience, they can see what the house can look like with furniture. It's very cool. And it definitely helps us um, sell homes. The last thing we want to touch on as far as phase one goes is photography. Professional photography is a requirement and it has been a requirement for years. And we are still surprised when people do not, when agents do not provide professional photography. The on, we keep, I keep talking about this. The online experience for the buyers is your introduction. It's your launch. It's like, you know, the grand opening of a restaurant or, you know, it's just so important that you look beautiful online so that people want to come in and take a look at your house. So this is an example. One of our agents took this picture and this is the professional picture. Same here. I mean, this is fine. Um, you know, we're just taking these pictures for us. We're not sharing these with anyone. These just go in our files. So later, if we need to remember how is the kitchen laid out, where the appliance is stainless steel, we can refer back to our photos. I took this picture. It's horrible. Um, this is what the professional picture looks like. And then we did do virtual staging in there too. That looked so good. So we had couches, we had rugs. It looked on top of the rugs, which sounds weird, but it makes it look cozier um, in the picture. I love all of this so much. What's next if you're a seller? All Everything that we've talked about was about phase one. And phase one is let's get you ready for the market. I believe that that's where a lot of our secret sauce is. We know how to get homes ready so that our sellers are selling faster and for more money. And our, we know that because we have a history of um, you know, that production and those statistics. So what happens after that? You're going to go on the market. That's your launch day, which is very exciting. You'll have showings. You might have an open house. You might not. Some of our sellers don't want that. They, don't, they just aren't interested in an open house, and that's fine. Next, we'll review offers. Now, I like to say offers because offers, having more than one offer, is fun. And it's exciting and it gives you power. That's the goal in all of this. The goal in all of this is to give you power in the process so that you have leverage. And a lot of times I think we get all of us, like sellers, us, it's easy to get stuck on what is that contract price? And that definitely matters. But we need to look at all the other terms. How much is the down payment for the buyer? Who is the lender? You would not believe how many problems we have because the lender isn't a quality lender. So we're vetting that lender. What does the appraisal contingency look like? Is it fully waived, partially waived, not waived at all? What about the inspections? Did you generate so many offers that maybe you have partial inspection waivers or full inspection waivers? I mean, these are delicious terms. If you can have some of these contingencies waived, your selling experience will be smoother and you'll just have more money in your pocket at the end of it. And that's really what, what we care about. Um, and then at the end, we'll be wrapping up with settlement. When you are a seller, you don't have to go to settlement. You can pre-sign. It takes about 15 to 20 minutes. It's very easy. We help you set that up. Um, yeah, Rocky, anything about any of yeah, any I think that's good. I see some questions in there. So I'm happy to jump in okay. on the test and facilitate that. Yep. I'm going to stop sharing the screen in just a minute. If anyone wants to talk to me, ask questions, book a meeting, it doesn't have to be to book a meeting. It could just be, let's schedule a phone call. You can shoot me a text or shoot me an email. Um, and if you want Rocky's information, I can just text me or email me and I'll send you Rocky's information. Um, before we go to Q&A, I want to make sure that I thank you for attending. Um, but I really, I was afraid to not show the slide because I would forget to thank Rocky. Um, Rocky, I really appreciate you. You know, I care about you and love you very much. Oh, thank um, you. Wendy. Feeling is mutual. Thank you. And the same for Tess. Like, I can't tell you all how much, I mean, Tess created this presentation. Um, she's running the tech. She's just an amazing human being. And I feel really lucky that um, we get to work together. So.
grateful, very grateful for both of you. Thank you. Feelings the same, Wendy. You know that. Yeah. So we're ready for questions. So you all answered most of the questions that were asked, but the last okay. one, if you all want to talk a little bit about open houses, are they used mainly um, if, a, if a house is proving tough to sell? Um, that's what somebody's heard in the past, but they don't know if that's true or if it has changed over time. So do you want to talk about open houses a little bit? Rocky? So uh, I believe Phil asked the question. So open houses, uh, one, it's a, a preference of the seller, right? It's what do you want? Uh, number one. So some people, I have a house that I'm going to put on the market here in a couple of weeks, and they have a lot of expensive uh, sports memorabilia, Ravens helmets, football jerseys, things of that nature. If they're not going to remove that from the home, uh, then I don't recommend that they do an open house where people are just traipsing through your home with the possibility of something walking away. Now, I don't want to scare you. Do things walk away? In 20 years of selling real estate, I've had one open house where stuff disappeared. Um, and it was a, it was actually a, a, a professional that had their kids running over here to distract us. And they went over there and took the stuff out. But we open houses to answer your question. Um, what we do is we advertise them. We put out the signs ahead of time. And then it can bring an influx of people to you all at one time because not everybody can reach their agent because not all agents are full time, right? Not all agents can go when the buyer is available. So an open house allows buyers the flexibility to come to your home on a Saturday between a two to three hour window, view your home at their leisure, take the time to look at it. And then if they really, really like your home, they can reach out to their agent and come back for a subsequent showing. So there is a benefit to having open houses, but it is a it's up to you. Some people are like, I don't want a bunch of people running through my house and that's fine. Right. But there, there's an opportunity there where you're basically accommodating and increasing the potential foot traffic because of people's busy schedules. Does that make sense? Yep. Thank you. Appreciate it. So I want to add a little bit to that. So one thing like, you know, there's like pre COVID, which is the old days. Right. And after COVID, which is like, we don't, no one knows what's happening. There's a lot going on, but nobody knows what's happening. Um, we've, we've kind of changed things up a little bit with open houses, which I found interesting. And I know Lauren has done this a couple of times. Lauren's on the call. She's an agent on the team. Um, we're listing homes earlier in the week. So listing on Monday or Tuesday and um, hosting open houses Wednesday at like from five to six 30 or four to six or something in the evening during the week. And the feedback from the buyers has been really interesting because they're so grateful that they can just go after work, get it done. They don't have to like do it on the weekend. And um, the traffic has been high, like the volume's high. And um and it does, like Rocky was saying, it does help buyers take a look at the house without their agent and say to the agent, we love it. We want to go, we want to schedule an appointment for Thursday. And then a lot of times the sellers love it because then they're under contract by Friday and they don't have to deal with, you know, a lot over the weekend. Rocky? And, and part of the weekday open house or open evening house, right? is it reduces the fear of missing out because a lot of people are mm -hmm. looking at the listings and they're looking yeah. at their schedule and this house comes on they're like oh my gosh there's no way we're going to get there before it sells and yeah. all of a sudden they see an open house in the middle of the week in the evening time after work and they're like oh this is awesome we can go look at the house and we're not going to miss out on it because it sold before we even had a chance to get there yeah i I mean, I like the the evening weekday open house more than weekends. Um, I don't know. I just feel like it's a great option. And and w if we're representing a seller, we want to know what the buyers want, right? That's part of our job is to be able to speak intelligently about, we know buyers want nice kitchens. Annette, your kitchen is making me... Want to just, I, already said, I already sent her a personal text message. I'm like, kitchen. that kitchen <laughs> Thank you. is 
goals. Does your backsplash go to the ceiling? Behind the stove, it does. Yes. Behind the, Behind stove? the stove, it does. Yes. Oh, it's so yeah. beautiful. It was, we're almost done. Matt's been doing it all himself. That's crazy oh, wow. that he can do that. That saved us a lot of money that he could do it all himself. That's insane. Yeah. Yeah, it's so beautiful. Okay. I mean, we're it's gonna really that beautiful. Into, that money saved is going into the bathrooms next. So <laughs> there you go. Right. Move it all around. If you need help with that, call me. <laughs> I will. I will. I'm going to get your info from Wendy. I love yeah, Wendy. She's a great person. Oh, she <laughs> I love you too, thank Annette. You. It's so good to see you. Good to see you. Thank you for doing this. Sure. I love it. I'm happy that people are here and we can have this conversation. And I mean, it's weird. I mean, Annette, you and I are in the same boat, yeah. right? Like we've lived in our houses. I mean, how long have you been in your house? Uh, over 25 years. Yes. Yeah, well, when no. we bought in 97. Okay. I, I yeah. bought in 2001. So right. Yeah. Not long after you. Right. So it's weird. I mean, when I sold my investment property over in Elk Ridge, I'd never lived in that house. Uh -huh. So it was always, it was a little bit different. Cause I didn't have, I didn't have an emotional connection to the house at all. Mm -hmm. Um, but yeah, it's like just thinking about like, what do I need to do if mm -hmm. I'm, if I'm selling in four years, you know, like that's kind of where I feel like a lot of people are in that mode of like, what's next? Where do we want to go? Right. Right. How do we want this to look? Especially, I feel like, again, I feel like I'm getting personal with you and I, but like with where our kids, like where are they landing? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And waiting to see what that looks <laughs> like before you make any decisions. Right. 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 Yeah. right. And sometimes right. people want to enjoy the home, right? They want to enjoy the, the, yeah. of the newly created space. I mean, I see your right. coffin, I see your coffered ceilings. I mean, that's beautiful. Um, but yeah. what happens oftentimes we'll get homes ready for sale. And then people will come in and they're like, wait a second, this looks good. I want to stay. <laughs> and we're like, no, that's not the point. The point was to get your home ready to sell it, not for you to change your mind and stay in it. Right. Um, you aren't love it. You aren't love it or list it. <laughs> right. No, I'm not. I'm not. I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> that is not me. I wish, but it's not. Yeah. <laughs> well, that's where I'm at right now is I just want, we, we're we trying to do things to the house that we can enjoy for the less than 10 yeah. years that we'll still be here. I, I imagine in five to 10 years, we we will need to sell the house because yeah. we're going to need one level living and I don't have mm -hmm. that. I don't have that option in this house. So. Yeah. It's so weird how like we're having that conversation, isn't it? Mm-hmm. So strange. But we if have aging parents and we see what lays ahead for us. Yeah, so for sure. Same. We gotta make those plans. Yeah, well, same. If you, can, if you can cook as good as your kitchen looks, invite Wendy <laughs> over. Right. I, Please. I try. Okay. <laughs> well, I don't need any food. I, I Coffee's fine for me. <laughs> um. Yeah, I was thinking about another client that I met with who is, you know, trying to do the same thing. And she's probably going to sell in two or three years, mm -hmm. but it's the same thing. Like she doesn't want to be jammed up against this deadline mm -hmm. of like, oh, I have six months or, I mean, sometimes it's three months. I mean, okay. with Anne over in Sebring, Rocky, I feel like that was, uh, we had a little bit more time, but it still felt like she was buying new construction, you know, doing the one level living thing down in North Carolina. Mm -hmm. And I don't like the feeling for the client. Do you know what right. I mean? I don't like to see my client just like, oh my God. And we're always like, we got you. We got it. We do this all no, the she time. Was, she we wasn't stressed it. out. I mean, we handled it. Everything that came up, we handled I know. We did. We really did. And she loves us. Like, she's so grateful. And I, all I care about is that she's happy, mm -hmm. you know? Um, but Annette, I think you're smart to do that. So I haven't shared this with like people from the neighborhood, but Jason and I were thinking about and maybe I shared it with you, but maybe not other people, but we were thinking <laughs> about moving in, I think it was 2022. And this is related to the webinar, by the way, in case anyone's wondering, like, why are you telling us the story? Um, we were thinking about moving to Anne Arundel County to the water. Okay. And Rocky knows this because he was involved in the process, but I still had a little bit of wall left on my main level and we took that out and we had like the two level bar thing going on. And I wanted to drop that down like you have. Mm -hmm. So we did all of that and we invested about $60,000 in another, this was our second like kitchen. It was a refresh, not a remodel. Mm -hmm. We were, we renovated two bathrooms. We replaced flooring in, in two places and 
you know, we ended up deciding not to sell and we ended up buying a house down at Ocean Pines right, right. instead. Um, but, you know, I always say to people, like, if I'm willing to put tens of thousands of dollars in my, into my house to get it ready to sell, I'm not doing that unless I know I'm going to make money from that. Mm-hmm, like, mm-hmm. I'm not. And so I want people to know that I'm following my own advice when it comes to, you know, getting ready to to w- do whatever is next. Sure. Yeah. Does anyone else have any questions? Do you want to put them in the chat or pop on? You can definitely reach out to me. Um, hopefully you grabbed my cell, but you can just find it on the website too. I really appreciate everyone being here today. It's been great to have a good number of people. I feel like the questions were good. Um, and Annette, it was really good to see you. Good to see you too, Wendy. Really nice good. to meet yeah. you, Rocky. Thank you. Nice to meet you as well. Wendy, thank, thank you, you everyone. Thanks for having me. Thank you, Rocky. I really appreciate it. And thank you again, Tess.